What's going on guys and welcome back to The Rift. My name is Terrence and since this weekend when the UFC trailer dropped for EA Sports UFC 4, I don't know why I said it in that order, um, we've actually gotten a ton of information since that trailer dropped. Some of that information including uh, the fact that the beta is supposed to be releasing this week with many people getting their beta codes either today, Monday or tomorrow, Tuesday. Um, for everybody else, you should have your code by the end of the week. We also potentially got confirmation that the game will be part of ea access which means the game while the actual release date for the game i mean will be august 14th uh for those of you who have ea access you'll get that 10 hour trial window about a week early so expect to get the 10 hour trial uh opened up on i think august 7th which is really cool so if you want to get early access to the game and have all of the the things in progress that you um uh make prior to getting the game um, all of that carries over to the full game. So if you've done it with Madden um, or any other previous EA games in the past, then you're already familiar with that. If you guys want to go subscribe to EA Access, you can visit their website and find out more on that. Um, we also got confirmation that Joe Rogan will not be in UFC 4. Instead, he's being replaced by Daniel Cormier. I personally love this because it means... <laughs> <clears throat> excuse me <laughs> almost choked on spit it means that the game's uh commentary quality is going to be a lot higher joe rogan didn't like doing those recordings and so oftentimes what you were hearing was just recorded materials from live events that they plugged into the game and it was very awkward compared to hearing like uh john anik for instance talking where he went in and recorded all these hours of uh dialogue and audio this time we'll have daniel cormier also doing that and apparently him and anik did it at the same time so the commentating should be really really crisp like we see in some of the other sports games um i keep looking over at my notes i wrote a lot of notes so i have to keep looking over at them um a lot of this new information that i got actually came from a polygon article that i just saw so i'm going to switch my screen over real quick just so you guys can see what i'm about to be talking about and you have a little bit better visual representation than just watching my talking head um so i highlighted a lot of this stuff earlier but i lost my highlight unfortunately but that's okay because i already know where everything i want to talk about is so we spoke about in the last video pre-order bonuses and you saw in the trailer anthony joshua and tyson fury but we also now have confirmation that martial artist bruce lee will be in the game which is super cool um which brings up another fact that if you pre-order um ufc 3 or if you pre-order ufc 4 by going on UFC 3, you actually save 10% as well as get the Bruce Lee pre-order. So if you're trying to save a little bit of money, that's one way to do it is by either using EA Access, I think you get 10% off if you do that, or just going to UFC 3 um, and pre-ordering UFC 4 through that game, inside that game. Um, also, one thing that we've been told, there's no announcement yet for the next-gen consoles. It looks like the team that built UFC 4 hasn't even gotten access to that gear yet or those dev kits. Um, but they're saying, basically, if the systems are out-of-the-box, backwards compatible, then this game should theoretically work perfectly fine. Um, now, the fact that they aren't sure about that is super strange, as noted in this Polygon article, because the box art for the Xbox One version does say that uh, there's an Xbox Series X compatibility through smart delivery. So we'll have to wait and get more information on that later. Um, I don't know how many of us are actually gonna be getting those next-gen consoles on launch anyway, so that might not be that big of a deal. And who knows, early next year or even late this year, we might even see a port of UFC 4 once the team gets their hands on a dev kit. So that's pretty cool. So um, we're gonna keep scrolling down because now we get into some of the really big news, and that's the gameplay experience. So they wanted to add more sim compared to um, just keeping the game realistic. We've known in the previous three iterations, they've done their best to keep the game as realistic as possible, but this time around, they really seem to be leaning towards, they want everyone to experience and love the game. Um, EA UFC 3, I did like it. I did enjoy the gameplay, but if we're being honest, compared to the Undisputed series, it is very difficult to learn those controls and actually get good at them. 
I remember going through career mode early on when I first got EA Sports UFC 3, and I was getting beat up on like normal difficulty, right? Like just a step above easy. Um, there are way too many things to do. Now, from a competitive standpoint, playing online, it's super cool. It's awesome. It keeps it competitive. It really adds a level of skill to the game, but it also pushes away a whole lot of new fans, and it does limit their market. If I go over to somebody's house and I'm not a huge MMA fan, and I play that, and it's that difficult to get into, I'm probably never gonna buy that game to play myself. But if there's an easy level of entrance, for instance, in this case, um, for striking, for initiating grappling, for initiating clinch, you no longer are using the joysticks. Instead, you simply tap buttons for quick basic strikes, hold them for longer, more damaging and or flashy attacks, and then if you wanna enter clinch or attempt a takedown, um, you'll also be using buttons for that instead of the analog stick. Um, even cooler than that is how you block transitions and takedowns, right? So now if what they're saying, I'm just going to quote them here because I think they do a much better job of verbalizing it than me. But if you were frustrated by missing the timing for blocking and takedown attempts, the animation changes should help in that area because there are new movement based ways to defend against or escape from takedowns. My understanding of this is if you're circling out and someone goes for a takedown or something rather than having to hit up on this and hold down the trigger. Instead, you'll be able to move out of the way of some of these takedowns, almost like a bull charging at someone, right? So if you're not setting up your takedowns properly, you're probably not going to be able to land them on a lot of people who get really good at uh, movement and agility in this game. So um, keep that in mind. Now, one thing to note is the submission system has also changed. Um, uh, 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 oh, well, I'm kind of skipping. Let me slow down a bit. Let's go back to um, the, the, the controls for grappling. So push up to get up, left to start a submission, and right to mount your opponent um, and start pounding away. So if you were curious about how you're going to be advancing positions on the ground this time, remember before you had all those different gates, it was a lot of options. Um, I actually really enjoyed that grappling whenever I wanted to play a blanket creative fighter. Um, but it is important that we note here um, they've simplified it quite a bit now you'll do all of that with the left stick so push up to get up left to start a submission right to mount your opponent and then um, start pounding away so to posture up and throw some punches um, now this is the part I was trying to skip to a second ago um, if you do want to keep the complicated system from before maybe you didn't find it that complicated or you found it beneficial to you and your style um, it will still be available they also will have a hybrid mode um, or setting that kind of mixes the two the simple new version as well as the more in-depth advanced older version so um, there's something there for everyone um, you'll no longer be breaking those walls um, with the right stick to do submissions, it looks like the submission system they're going to be taking this time um, will be more like the Undisputed series. Uh, again, here is where they cite um, how things were a little too complicated and they wanted to make it um, a lot less complicated, to quote Brian Hayes here. So let's get into my favorite part of this article, career mode. Um, so. <clears throat> excuse me EA has been taking a lot of information um, from the game from the fans they have been listening to our complaints um, and because of that career mode has been uh, copied and pasted and then tweaked in a lot of really cool ways and while we haven't gotten our hands on it I am excited to see what we're going to get so when the game starts UFC 4 is going to take you straight into career mode as a tutorial or as they call it onboarding experience you'll have an opening sequence of four amateur fights that introduce players to a multitude of different styles including boxing kickboxing wrestling and jiu-jitsu so when the game opens you'll probably get like the kumite and the uh, backdoor street or backyard street fighting you'll probably that's where those will probably come into play so um, after that, they're saying it's very similar to UFC 3, where the whole point is becoming the greatest of all time, or GOAT mode. Um, as Polygon noted in their review of this game, you know, it was super repetitive. You guys have heard me talk about how UFC 3's career mode was stupid repetitive, um, and so they're trying to fix that. They're aware of that issue. Training will still be earning points. No more the mini games, um, but the more you use a move, the better the move is. Is supposed to be so I'm assuming you upgrade and attack the more you use it maybe if you throw a ton of flying knees your flying knee gets higher and higher rated um, I'm assuming you've got to land these things not just throw them but we'll see um, more importantly you can now choose to accept or decline fights 
in career mode and that does have an effect on your career that's very interesting very very interesting definitely with the previous game you were kind of forced to fight the same person i fought khabib one time almost eight times in a row i didn't even know that was possible i thought the game was glitching out and sure enough it was just us going back and forth and after a few i'd lose the title then i'd win it back and i'd have to fight him again it was just this non-stop rotation so now if i can decline that fight and get another fight that's pretty cool the question is what are the negatives for declining a fight i'm interested to see um, what will happen there it says it'll be consequences for your career development and your rivalries M really cool though is they finally answered our prayers of not just giving us looking for a fight uh the contender series or the ultimate fighter we once again have world fighting alliance um and this time you can stay in it as long as as you want you don't immediately have to go into the contender series or tough or any of that stuff you can actually take your time and fight for the wfa as long as you want um, now again career mode will be heavily excuse me i cannot speak this morning it will be heavily influenced by create a character or create a fighter um and with that you have new body types and hairstyles you also have a ton of really crazy um items you can add to your character we spoke about accessories in my previous video but now we know a little bit more you have the option of getting crowns animal heads luchador mask and the tattoo creator is apparently extremely in depth so um it basically sounds like a WWE game now with the Creative Fighter, and I love that. I think that'll add a lot of replayability um, to it. Now, Ultimate Team is gone. So, microtransactions are still here, but Ultimate Team is gone. Microtransactions will be in the form of a currency that you can use to buy some of those cosmetic items for your Creative Fighter. So, if you don't feel like grinding and unlocking some of those accessories and pieces, or I'm assuming unlocking some of that currency to use towards those pieces, you have the option of using real world money to buy them. That's perfectly fine. I have no issue with microtransactions when they are regarding cosmetics specifically. So, that's okay. None of the cosmetics will will impact play or boost attributes um is at least that's what they're saying so far so being able to buy these things will not affect gameplay in any way other than you might be fighting a dude that looks like a lion all right so um for the most part i believe that is everything um oh yeah open weight now in um offline exhibition matches so you can actually put a bantam weight against a light heavyweight so if you want john jones to fight henry cejudo or something i'm assuming you can do that now and they've also um balanced it so that like for instance john jones isn't going to be a hundred times more powerful than henry cejudo even though the size scale will probably be off so that's pretty cool um for the most part, that's everything we've gotten so far. I'm just double checking my list one more time to make sure I didn't miss anything. Again, if you're excited for the beta, it should be dropping within the next 48 hours. I am so ready to play it and we'll be uploading some gameplay right here on this channel. So be sure to hit that subscribe button um, so you can see all the gameplay. If you got a beta code, maybe we can play together if it's online and be sure to hit that like button if you like the video. I know this one was kind of long, but we had a lot of information to cover in this article um, and we're almost at release. Release is a month away and the beta is literally at most days away. Thank you guys for watching so much and I cannot wait to make the next video. I'll see you guys then. Peace.